All right, welcome to episode 104 of the Zen's Path <laughs> Entertainment Network. I keep wanting to go back and I have it and say the old name. Ah, I gotta break that habit. Uh, <laughs> it's like muscle memory at this point. Um, anyways, joining me today, uh, Stephen. Hello. I'm about to say, you gonna say anything? Like he's just kind of sitting there going, shaking his head. Yes, I'm Stephen. I'm not laid off. Okay. <laughs> uh, Chris. And joining us because I guess dinner got finished early, Rachel. <laughs> Salutations. <laughs> oh, you messing with her. She was possibly not going to be here because she was having dinner plans with friends, which, hey, that's perfectly fine. But we're always glad to have you here. Was the dinner we, at least good? Yes, we um, ate early. Awesome. We got um, Blaze Pizza. It was it was very Ooh. delicious. Yeah, pizza does sound good. Hmm. All right. Oh, man, it has been a hectic <laughs> past few days, uh, specifically for me, with a lot of stuff Same. going on. So as of Monday, I'm going to be starting almost two weeks straight of travel. Uh, I'll still be able to do the show. We will still have the other episodes because I'll be back in time to at least do that. But then I turn right around and fly back out. And at least one of those times I get back and then the next day we do the next show. So we'll see how the notes turn out this time. If I can Bring do them on travel. Huh? Make sure you try Maine Lobster. Given what I've been told, I don't. I could probably go to McDonald's and still get lobster. Like, I'm going to have Maine Lobster no matter what I do. Yep. <laughs> My father from Maine, so yeah, he's he knows his stuff. Ah, I'll be going in. Uh, that one's not ne next week. Is Wyoming? The week after is Maine. I'm flying into Bangor, Maine, uh, which Amanda told me I need to hunt down Stephen King if I'm anywhere in that area. So we'll see what happens. Not like I mean, literally hunt the man. Just, you know, I, I, what happened I mean, I'm Wait. pretty sure his house is like a historical landmark or something. So. I'll have to give one of you guys the login for everything in case I get shot trying to get out there. Someone can carry on the show. <laughs> All right. Well, let's jump into what we've been up to so we can get into our little bit of news here for today's show. Stephen, let's, uh, let's start off with you. What you been up to, man? Uh, I'm pretty light this week. That's kind of uh, what I started with you. <laughs> um, because of its complexity and the Easter eggs within, uh, I made sure to catch first episode of Loki season two. Say cool. nothing. Um, Loki's all I it. will say is keep your ears open for the Moon Knight Easter egg. Because it's awesome. Um, don't hate me, but I did not watch all of Moon Knight. It was good. You'll, I'm you'll, sure it was. You'll, you'll still, you'll probably <laughs> still get the Easter egg. Okay. Uh, um, but that one was done really well. Um, surprisingly, for the very first episode, having a mid credits and an after credit scene. So make sure of that too. Oh, I'm not cool. even surprised by that. Like, usually they save that for the end, but okay. Um, and then other than that, um, this could be its own hot topic with people. But uh -oh. sometimes I like to play games by proxy. <laughs> and by that, I mean, I watched somebody play it from start to finish. So I am currently watching a YouTuber do a Let's Play, a really long one of Lies of P. Mm. Because I myself will never play a Soulsborne, but the lore in it is it was too intriguing that, I, that I'm like enthralled watching him play through it. I come up with a dumb name for that, like plotching or something, like play watching. <laughs> so I also sometimes like to play games by proxy um the souls game the souls born type games are mm -hmm. that because i will never play those they stress me out too much so i'm with you on that but my play by proxy game series is actually the fallout games because i don't play those types of games either at all but i am very okay. fascinated with the lore and the history of the fallout series i just don't that type of game doesn't interest me like i like watching other people play it but not so i'll keep that in mind uh, next time I stream really <laughs> it's still spoiler free but with without like uh kind of just to get you into some of the lore mm -hmm. so lies of p is a double meaning uh lies of p is pinocchio mm-hmm obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but in Japan, P also can refer to blood. And what they mean by that is in this series, uh, at one point or another, you're asked to lie or not. 
as you lie, you're becoming more human. Mm. But if you tell the truth, you're still just a puppet. You're just obeying. So it's in your blood to lie because then it makes you more human. Um, and they have little yeah. things like it. they have a cat in the game mm -hmm. in Geppetto's mansion, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm. Um, but it hates you right now. And the what we're all what I'm guessing and what the streamer was guessing while playing through it is the more you lie, eventually the cat will like you because you're human. Huh. So I, I really hope he, he uh, we're both right in that aspect because I love that aspect of it. Um, yeah. And I love picking up on the these little, um, you know, the rest of the Pinocchio crowd, like the the donkeys and stuff, like how mm -hmm. those fit in. It's really well done. Hmm. Okay. I'm kind of curious, like if you're becoming more human, do you? Because all the advertisements I've ever seen shows the character look like it's just a young man, like it's already a person. He yeah, you're, look yeah, you're like basically a, a look alike of. What's his name? Timothy Chalamet from Wonka, or yep, Timothy. Yeah, Timothy. Yeah, so Chalamet. you don't start yeah. off looking like a puppet. You're always looking like that, and it's just yeah. You always look the same. Oh, I don't okay. think I don't think you necessarily ever like uh, change. But again, like I don't know yet. He's only like two and a half, maybe three hours into the I game. I kind of wish you would. That'd be kind of a nice. You can still change your appearance, that. so I don't know yet. Maybe if, maybe if, uh, you don't bleed, and then as you get more human you start bleeding more i don't know there's, there's... Like, yeah i don't know until uh what do you call it? i don't know if there's like a fable aspect because fable like took a while before you looked pretty different for being a bad dude or a good guy true so, i just meant more of the aspect of being a puppet to a person like if they really focused on that or not if it was just the, the, the i was just curious it's easy to miss some of the things that could make you more human because they're like these little side quests you have to find Mm. And they're all incredibly sad because <laughs> of course they are. Yeah, of course they are. Like before and you get into the game, the uh, intro uh, after you pass the prologue, I want to say, kind of gives you the whole story of what happened. And mm. it's just like, oh, I know what I'm getting myself into now. Oh my! I kind goodness. of wonder if these games getting more and more depressing and just depraved. You're just like, well, you know, all the crap going on in my life. This just makes it look better because it's not this. <laughs> like. <laughs> Oh, that's mm, that's sad. All right, uh, Chris, what have you been up to? Uh, I'm still waiting for all the games for the holidays to come out. So, in the <laughs> interim, I'm just clearing out my Steam backlog, playing a lot of games that I haven't really played in a long time. Pac-Man Championship Edition DX Plus, Psychonauts Two, yeah, Mega Man Eleven. Peggle. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> yes, rest That's actually my game of the year. That year. I the love Peggle. Not even the second Peggle. Well, I'll get to the second one when I'm done with the first. Listen, I played Peggle on DS Peggle. so much. I love Peggle. <laughs> like me and uh, my, uh, I had a, like a, a group of friends back home that on like Saturday or Sunday nights after we'd get back from church or whatever and dinner, we'd go to one of their houses and play board games or video games. And if we ever didn't know what to play, we'd whip out the Xbox 360 and play Peggle. <laughs> so when the Peggle 2 announcement came out, we, I immediately sent it to the group <laughs> chat. And it was just, Peggle 2! And they all freaked out. So now every time I um, hear about someone playing Peggle, I think of them. <laughs> well, freak out, look, out, look up the, uh, it was this year too, the Peggle 2 speedrun. Oh, oh, oh my god, I can't call me intrigued. It was very interesting to say the least. I learned a lot. <laughs> no. Strats, he never yeah. died through the whole thing. It was a no oh, death no. run. Listen, I'm Man. impressed. So, Chris, I have to know what are your thoughts on Psychonauts 2 so far? Oh, I played it a long time ago, but I consider it one of the best uh action games or just uh, best written games I have ever yes. played. Um, Psychonauts 1 was great, but it was so chunky. It felt, it, you, you could really tell that Double Fine had never really made a platform game before. Right. Especially toward the end with the final level, mm -hmm. it was just built so badly. And it, you can tell with the sequel, they took all that feedback that gamers gave and they just blew it out of the water. It is honest, I, I... Uh, honestly. I can't even fault it for anything, just for the fact that, you know, 
Sadly, we will never get another one, but you know what? This is enough. Why do you think we won't get another one? I think because at this point, Schaefer's probably told all of the story he wanted to. Oh, it's okay. Like amongst two. He tied up so many loose ends. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't, you know, when you really like a story and then they make another season just because everybody likes the story and yeah. now it sucks. I don't want that to happen to Psychonauts. I agree. I mean, I could see them. I could see them doing more stories in that world. I don't think they need to focus on Rasputin so much if they didn't want to, or maybe make him one of the background characters like they had the other ones. Because there is so much potential in that world to explore it with stuff, but yeah, true. Damn, that game now you got to don so the glasses amazing. and play Rhombus of Ruin. <laughs> That's true. I don't have a VR set yet, but when I do, I'm about to say I think I have that one on PS4 VR is what I played it on. Yeah, I do. Uh, I don't know if it came through Plus or something, but I think I have it. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was just such a good game. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Pac-Man Championship Edition DX. I have played an ungodly amount of that game. I just like I'm a lot of those Pac-Man. I'm better at the first one. I'm better at the first one. The second one always confuses me because of all the jumping and the weird <laughs> trains of ghosts, and it just boggles my brain. I'm better at the first one. Yeah, the first one I actually completed. So I really loved it too. I remember, I think it was the first one they put on 3DS. One of them they I can see over. that. I think it was that one. All right. And uh, Rachel, we'll go with you next, and then I'll finish up with mine, which will probably once again bring Rachel right back into it. So- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what have you been so, up to, Rachel? So this morning, um, I got up after I was out um, late with a friend last night, um, and I was like, I want to play a game today. And I remembered, oh, yeah, Sea of Stars came out. And while I got it for basically for free on with PlayStation plus on the PS five. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to throw the developers some money, of course, because they deserve it. Um, and I, uh, got it on my switch and I'm actually really enjoying it. It's, you know, traditional RPG. It's got some interesting like battle mechanics, um, in it, which I'll talk about in a minute, but it is, um, it's, it gives me the same joy that the golden sun games gave me. Ooh. So, but it's oh, the boy. combat is not the same <laughs> at all. Like it's not the same at all, but just the vibes of it where it's just these, these kids going off to, to possibly save the world and they recruit other people along the way. Um, is it true that the writing is bad? I'm hearing that. I mean, there's, I, I wouldn't say it's like, perfect there's some like stuff that is like like one part i like absolutely kind of burst out laughing and and this is just when you get (laughs) like off the first kind of island um where there's this um wisp character like he's like mist he's made of mist and he's Mm -hmm. telling you oh okay in order to use these giant like sentinel rock golem things that transport you to island to island you have to tell that golem on the island that you're on the name of the whatever golem that of the island that you're trying to get to so you're on the first island and you're going okay so when you talk to this this golem here in front of us you're going to say extol a x apostrophe toll t-o-l um and then if you want to get it back here the name of this golem is and then he gets interrupted because one of the characters goes, oh, extol, cool. And the golem just picks you up and yeets you before you're <laughs> able and yeets you to the next island before you're even able to find out the name of the the golem on the island that you're on. So then the, the mist guy makes this commentary like, whoo, we won't see them for a long time. <laughs> uh. <laughs> and, and I just... <laughs> I, well, I can appreciate of, dumb writing like that. That's actually kind of funny. Like some of some of it, where I I think people are mistaking dumb jokes for bad writing. Um, that can happen and, sometimes. Yeah, and I and I think the reason why is because there's no voice acting, so you can't really get the the tone of mm. what they're trying to say, where it's supposed to be comedic. Um, but so so far, it's pretty cool. Some of the, I mean it. 
some it could use some more detail story wise and i think that's where a lot of other people are saying Mm. um it's got bad writing but also i don't know how i haven't gotten very far and so far i'm enjoying it it's beautiful the combat is interesting um so you you can sneak up on enemies by hitting them right before you the the attack part like happens like right before the battle like starts um but only if you sneak up on them but so you have two main characters that you can switch between that you're in the party of course like to run around as um but you're able to control all your party members in battle so you start out with two people and then you get up to three um one guy has he's a blade dancer and he has the power of the sun um the other person i think it's a girl it's a uh <laughs> they're a monk and they have the power of the the moon essentially and um you are able to do certain attacks um that have these powers and of course she has a staff so she has blunt um like blunt attack style and he has sharp attack style cuz he has a sword and then they have a uh their their friend that comes with them them and he's a battle chef so he one of his attacks is literally throwing a snack at his friends to heal them um and then the rest is just um he has a like a pot lid as a shield um that you can replace with other things I like and, this guy <laughs> yeah and and he has also blunt attack but he needs um, to attack with a frying pan that's just the you have to finish that off and do that one of the mechanics that you learn is using magic is do is performing magic without using magic and, and the way that you do that is you um use a normal attack on an enemy and they generate this like energy which you can then absorb into yourself and then that activates kind of like the um whether it's moon or sun like energy on your normal attacks um so that's kind of cool but then also like when an enemy is charging for like a spell um these little icons appear like by them um and then also like a countdown of how many turns until the spell is unleashed and so say say for example it has like the blunt uh sign the like the blunt the the blunt um attack sign the moon for moon and then like the sun so you have to use all those attack types within one two three turns however many the countdown is in order to stop that spell from going off so it's got some interesting mechanics and then if you hit the a button at the right time right before your hit lands you get a little bit more um attack power on that hit if you hit the a button this is on the switch of course right before an enemy attack lands you can block and get less damage so it's got some cool mechanics there's some really interesting puzzle stuff going on where you can't like do things with certain things on the map until you get a key item or another ability um so it's pretty cool so far i'm enjoying it um if you're looking for an rpg to play that's just bright and colorful and has some unique mechanics then i recommend it yeah because i also read that um I through callbacks and Easter eggs that it's actually a prequel to the messenger. So if you've played the messenger, I have uh, not played the messenger. So, um, I have not noticed any of that. And <laughs> it, it says of, and they have said, of course, it's not required for you to play it, but you might appreciate, you might notice some things and appreciate some things a little yeah, more. People were picking up on a lot and mm-hmm. I know they're two totally different games. So you have to get, Used to like a Ninja Gaiden clone yeah. versus the RPG. Yeah, the yeah. humor is pretty much the same though, especially yeah. toward the end of the Messenger. No, they really. do that same kind of thing where you know they go, "Well, isn't this an inconvenience?" Oh well, <laughs> that well, kind of joke. I think that's also why it reminded me a little bit of Golden Sun because it had that weird, that kind of weird like <laughs> humor, <laughs> but. But I'm enjoying it, and I, I recommend it. If you, like you said, once you guys get through your backlogs, because my backlog's also bad. Um, <laughs> I will but never. Of, but of uh, course, uh, <laughs> I, um, I also I, I play kind of like a spooky game or a spooky game series every October, mm-hmm. and sometimes it's just replaying one of the replaying one of the spooky Nancy Drew games that I used to play growing up. Uh, but this time I decided because I had got them on sale. Um, when they were part of a Steam sale at one point, were the original Black Mirror Black Mirror series. I don't know if you guys Ooh. ever played those. 
I have uh, not. Are you talking about the interactive episodes or the, is this a different thing? Black, no, 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 no. It's by the Adventure Company. It's an old, like, point and click, like, adventure game oh. from way back in the day. They actually redid it and released it, I think, on the first one on ps3 and then also on steam like a number of years ago i started to play that one and even though i like the story in it it's the way you get through the like the scary sequences where you're kind of seeing like a flashback mm -hmm. if the ghosts in the flat if the like people in the flashback scene notice you they kill you like straight up kill you um <laughs> in this in this remake version and there's just the way you move around in the game is very it's it's not good um and this is for the remake one so i put it down and i booted up the old original version and it is much different. It is very, very, very different, like style of play, um, and I like it better. <laughs> so, oh, Lord. Um, so I'm enjoying that. Um, and then, of course, I, I I watched Haunted Mansion, the new one. Mm -hmm. I, it was good. I understand why people didn't like it very much. Um, it wasn't like perfect. It felt like they there was more they could have done. Like it felt like there there's just some things that were missing, like there was like scenes that should have been in more, there should have been more scenes. It should have been a little bit longer. Um, okay. But, but overall it was very good. The music was very good. Um, the effects were really good. Um, it had all the ghosts in it. Like every single ghost that you see in the ride is in there essentially. Um, even the MC Escher staircase which I was like, yay! <laughs> so that's one of my favorite parts on the ride. It's the the weird stairs. So, and then of course I'm still working on my reading and rereading backlog, um, which I'm halfway through. Death warmed over by Kevin J. Anderson, which is very good. Oh, nice. It's a zombie private investigator. Really? Fun. Yeah. Dan Shamble, zombie PI. That is a great name. Yeah. It's actually, okay, I might need you to send me a list of these because that sounds interesting. Amanda's always looking for good books, and that sounds right up my alley because I so, love good zombie stuff. So, but it, I mean, it's not like like um, to start like it doesn't have to be like horror zombie. I just mean like I just yeah. enjoy zombies. Oh yeah, stuff. no, no, it's it's very like they they call this the big uneasy. It's when someone actually read the Necronomicon and unleashed vampires, werewolves, and other undead denizens onto the world. Um, and it's got comedy, it's got detective stuff, it's, it's, um, like, it's just really funny, and the guy who, um, the guy who writes them, Kevin J. Anderson, he's, uh, he's an author who works with the son of the man who wrote Dune. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, so Damn. he works with the, the son of the guy who wrote Dune on all of the new Dune books that come out periodically, like, they co-author mm. it together or something like that. Um, really nice guy. I've met him in person at cons a few times over the years. Uh, and it's, it's, they're just, it's a really good book series. Like when I first got this book, I think it was back in like, when I was still working at the college, Jeremy. Um, okay. That's been a while. And I went to <laughs> Pensacon and I got, and I came back with like the first two or three books. Mm -hmm. Um, and then every time I went back since I would get one of them. Um, like they're the publishing uh, house that they were with at the time, like recognized me after the first like tw two times that I saw them at cons. They were like, "Hey, Rachel, what are you buying this time?" <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, "I don't know," because I would spend a couple hundred dollars just at their publishing booth because I'm a lover of books. I'm a bibliophile. Nothing so, wrong with that. When you said uh, "friends of the son of the guy who wrote Dune," all I could think of was. <laughs> Dark helmets, hey, like I'm your father, brothers, nephews, cousins, former roommate. roommate. Yeah. Does that make us absolutely mm. nothing. nothing? Yeah, no, I'm not, not to sure. Derail. Oh, yeah, I, no, go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say, not to derail too much, but you might like a sci fi version of that called The Automatic Detective by A. Lee Martinez. Essentially, Ooh. it's a uh, how to put this, imagine the original Iron Man, the big gray suit. 
mm-hmm. with a fedora and trench coat on and solving <laughs> sci-fi post-nuclear mysteries. Interesting. Probably Consider- less drinking involved if it's not Tony Stark. Um <laughs> Considering I just got book recommendations from my friend Charles today um, of the Tales from the Nightside series, as well as the Edwin Drood series, which I have n- never read, but I've heard of before. Mm-hmm. Um, and that plus like, you know, a whole other, my backlog is really, really, really bad. Like I have like three or four books on my nightstand that I'm just like, okay, I've, I'm going to get through these. And then I'm going to get through these. <laughs> Not to mention what's on my Kindle. I have a, I'm, I, I am a book dragon. I hoard books. I'm married that's, to one. I know how that goes. That's fine. Yeah. A few weeks ago, they had the uh, stuff your Kindle day where I did not participate in that because if I did, I would be dead. I don't think Amanda then, knew about uh, it. And I didn't and say then anything. I just showed my wife that they, except for the, uh, title character they reunited most of the buffy cast to do an audible book yeah i saw i saw that um i I, i'm sorry every time i see um uh the guy who plays spike i just remember running into him at a con and um i think i was in an elevator with him and i looked over at him and he goes i know you're gonna say you loved spike and i go no 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 i loved your harry dresden because he did the audiobooks for the Dresden Files. And when I say that man was shocked, he was shocked. So, <laughs> oh, more wow. people should like the Dresden Files. They're so good. They are. They're so, so good. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and finish up with what I've been up to. Since everybody else, go ahead and go. So, uh, Rachel made a recommendation uh, during last episode that I watch a little show called. Hell of a boss, and the <laughs> also watched the first episode of Has Been Hotel, mm-hmm. and I will say we've gone down a damn rabbit hole over here. <laughs> and then I got Amanda to watch them, so we watched the entire season again. We're a couple of episodes into the second season of Hell of a Boss. We I am too. All I'm Has not Been current Hotel. on it. Yeah, I'm not current on Hell of a Boss either. I'm a few episodes behind. So, oh, you started some shit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny though. So messed up. Yeah, it is. Uh, I was telling the boys about them. Uh, mm-hmm. And yeah, I'm like, do not watch this near your sister. Yeah. <laughs> Wear headphones. I, I, I got to I gotta know who your favorite character is. Uh, um, I'm bad with names. It was actually the same guy that was the voice of, uh, um, I just said his name earlier, Rasputin. Um, oh, Zim. I'm sorry. Yeah. Same that's, guy that played Zim. Richard I'm, Corbett's character. I think that's. I'm blanking on his uh, name. I know which one it is. I can see him because he's the one with the guns. And I always love like the whole fight um, with the bigger guy from the farm. Where he's getting his butt kicked. And at the end, he's like, oh, yeah, I got my gun. I really should have used this earlier. Uh, <laughs> I think that's, it's Moxie. It's Moxie. Moxie. Yes. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Mox- Millie. Mo- no. no, Moxie. Moxie. Yeah, Millie, Moxie. Millie's his Millie's wife. Millie's the wife. Yes. That's yeah. It. Which yeah, their so. relationship is adorable. It really um, is. <laughs> <laughs> so um my favorite character is Stolas. Mm-hmm. Oh boy. So yeah. <laughs> Lord. Blitz. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Say my name once, just right one goddamn time. <laughs> <laughs> but um the the fun I, I do admit um the the hard the I laughed really hard and the thing who made the thing that made me laugh really hard was actually something um moxie it was related to something moxie said um Mm -hmm. where it was the michael crawford comment (laughs) i don't know if you remember that but i just i i think i do yeah (laughs) yeah i'm not gonna repeat it because it was kind of like whoa (laughs) but it um it made me laugh so hard that i had to pause (laughs) because i just did not expect it and then i was like oh well you know i can i can yeah okay (laughs) so i mean i was just i was really surprised by like the quality of it and everything Mm -hmm. like it's it's very well done um i love the little details and the his you know kind of the world building around it and, and they got they've got some really like famous people to voice act in it too. Yeah, I was surprised by that. <laughs> because it's it's one it's kind of like one of those things that it's like it's so well done and just so so off the wall that people are like, yeah, I want to do that. So that was sorry. 
That was my phone. <laughs> I was like, what? So, <laughs> I thought I put it on silent, but it did not. Yeah, it just wanted to talk anyways. Um, but yeah, what surprised me, especially when I was watching it and all of a sudden like, wait, is that, is that Norman Reedus? <laughs> like, yep. He just popped up and, and was like, okay. And they wanted to get him back too when that um, c- character reappears later, but he was not able to and it made me really sad. So. Oh, I wondered because I haven't seen him pop back up yet. Other than, like, he will. Yeah. I, I figured he would. Like they, they left that whole ending of him popping back up. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so we have become fans of that series. Good recommendation, Rachel. Yeah, we enjoyed and, it. And you have has been to look forward to in January. So yeah, just just to tell you how much how many problems I had editing last week's show. Um, <laughs> I was up until about three o'clock in the morning just trying to get through because it decided it's like, yeah, the audio isn't going to work. And I'm like, oh, no. So I was fighting with that, going back and forth while playing that show and watching it while waiting on stuff because I had to wait every time for it to process through. It took hours. Finally got it to work, but uh, at least I had something to watch this time. It would have really sucked if I just had to sit here. Um, all right. So we also finished the Ahsoka series. Amanda and I watched the last of that. I'm not going to go into details because I don't want to spoil it for people, but I do... I do like how this season went and I'm curious to see where they go forward from this. Um, they seem to be kind of planning for either another series to tie into it or even a, a movie to be done to tie in with that, which I think would be well, well fit with grand animal Thrawn. Mm. Um, Cause damn, they did a really good job with him from, mm. I, I remember from all the books when I was younger, reading those as they came out from air to the empire and everything, and then him showing back up later in Star Wars Rebels and other references. I think I've even got like little micro machine sets that are shaped, that are made like the books, the boxes are, and you can open it. It's got some of the vehicles mm-hmm. from those sets. It is super little tiny guy in blue, um, which is funny. But did anybody else watch it? Like I, I enjoyed the series. I thought it was very well done with a lot I of have, little references. I have and 40 stuff. more episodes of Rebels before I can uh, watch it. I had seen enough of Rebels that I was like, okay, I get it. And I can go ahead and I at least understand the story to get into this. Um, Chris, do you watch any of this or is it even up your alley? Or I <laughs> have not really been into Star Wars TV. It's not really my thing. Okay. He, Fair he enough. fell off after Solo. Mm. Was I fell asleep <laughs> during Solo. <laughs> I admittedly mm. watched like all of the Mando stuff, and then I was like, "Oh, I sh- maybe I should watch ah- Ahsoka," but then I was like, "Oh, I haven't watched all of Clone Wars. I haven't watched Rebels. Uh, oh well, I guess I'm just not gonna watch any of this." We I still enjoyed the, it. I Amanda had never Andalore watched it. Would probably be Andor if you wanted to watch that by itself. Nah, yeah. not interested. That's more of a political I'm, intrigue, which I need to finish that one. I'm I'm fine being a like I will enjoy Star Wars. Just in like I'll go to the um the section of the the the, the park and <laughs> go there. Um I will watch the Star Wars movies, but I'm just like I will probably watch more Mandalorian stuff when that happens. Um well, look, there's a holiday special you should watch. No. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't tell me that. But I'm not like a... Don't watch it. Dear Ooh. God, do not. You'll never watch Star Wars again. Yeah, but I'm not I'm not like, you know, it's not my fandom. That's fine. Yeah. I love me some Star Wars, so... I liked it. I heard some people complaining about it. You don't want to watch it. the holiday special? You don't want to hear Princess Leia sing the lyrics to the Star Wars theme? Oh God! Oh, yeah. no. We're gonna have to cut that out. Yeah. <laughs> or, or, or Chris is like, that's either gone or I'm gone. Star One Wars canon. <laughs> that's not Star Wars canon. No. <sighs> or, or, I'm just gonna or forget Chewie's, you said that. Or Chewie's family, or even Luke with eyeshadow. Come on. <laughs> no, we're shooting that out of a cannon. That, yeah, that cannot be what? part of. This I'm 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 shooting myself out of a cannon after that one. <laughs> Ooh. All right, so I'm going to move on before we all shoot ourselves out of something. Uh, <laughs> I finally started playing Forza Motorsports. I got that the early release of it because I, you know, bought the whole VIP package thing for it, which has been consistent with, well, all the Forzas. I've pretty much made that a thing I'm doing every time now. 
And once again, it did recognize, hey, you've played the old games. Here's like special suits and other cars and things that you get for it. Not as much as they used to do, but at least they recognized it. Um, Holy crap, this game is gorgeous. <laughs> but Jeremy, IGN said it looked like garbage. Oh, yeah, they got does, in trouble for that one. Does uh, Does IGN ever really get things right anymore? They can. Um Sometimes they do have stuff that I mean, I do. What's, listen to some what's of it. their percentage, the though? Like 12. OK, I go with particular people. Yeah, the fair. problem I had, I think it was Dustin Legary, uh was the one that did it. I believe he recorded a comparison between Forza Motorsports and Gran Turismo 7. And everybody was pointing out like, you know, because he's like, oh, it looks terrible. Here's all the stuff. It looked all faded and, you know, the reflections were bad. Everything was kind of jacked up. Turns out he was running it. Uh, I guess there was a bug or something where it was not gr color grading correctly. A lot of the stuff wasn't working, but he used that as saying that's what the gameplay looks like for everybody and put the video out, making it look like absolute garbage. Um, there was also some accusations that he was running it on a PC with the settings turned down. Hmm. Oof, and that would be rough. Yeah, um, doing that, that would have been bad. Well, people are still looking. Well, before he ended up eventually pulling the video, but of course everybody got screen caps for it, and that's been that whole back and forth BS argument of people going like, "Oh, this is how terrible the Xbox is. Look at this; it's garbage." And I was playing it, and it's just holy shit! <laughs> like ray tracing in this game does work really well. Mm. I'm running it on the ray trace performance mode, so it's 60 FPS. With uh, ray tracing on the car, it doesn't go quite as far for environmental, but you're also driving so quick you don't notice half the time. But like if it's raining, there's water on the ground, everybody reflects, the cars reflect off each other, they reflect off themselves. It's noticeable uh, for a lot of that stuff, especially messing with photo mode, which sadly photo mode is kind of a step back from Horizon. I really love photo mode and it just feels like they didn't have all the features. The game is a little bit slower to play because you pretty much get stuck with a car. You pick which one you start with and then you have to build up that car over time. You have to build up points playing with that car to allow you to get access to other features to change them, but you have to level up per vehicle. I can't just play it, level up, and have access to stuff. I have to do it for every flipping car. Even if I have two of the same car, like I have two Subaru Impreza's, I have to level them up separately, which is kind of frustrating. I hope they change that. Um, I am looking at getting a steering wheel though, because oh. it's, yeah, no, it's that good. Like I'm, I'm really liking it and I'm working on redesigning the entertainment center where I can lock in a steering wheel, sit back on the couch and have that in the right setup with my TV to play it. Mm. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm sure I'll go more into this one and play it. Um, but I'm, I've been really happy with it. I'm, I'm really liking how it's playing weird. There's no music. Like I'm just so used to Forza games having music or something I can hear in the background. And it's just like, it's just cars. <laughs> That's mm. it. I looked and I'm like, am I, did I have an option turned off? It was like, am I on a streaming mode? What's going on? So I end up turning on music while I'm playing. So it's kind of weird. I just, I got so used to the Horizon series having like all these radio stations that I always have music playing. Right. So um, after that, on some of my recent trips, I got into playing Dead Cells again, which I picked that up with the Castlevania update for the Switch, which we talked about a while back on here. And during one of my recent flights, I popped it in, started playing it just to see how it was and got the hooks right back into me. And I was running around with a frying pan, smacking things in the face hilariously dying everywhere and discovering all the new mechanics and different routes you can take and uh, the little pop-up achievements you can get now. And I think the only thing the switch version has that I w wish it could have done better with is the loading times between runs takes a little while, but otherwise pretty snappy. Um, I know Steven, you've got it. Have you played much of the Castlevania content yet? Yeah. Uh, when it first said it was out, um, I did purchase it, it so because it, I had the original game physical mm -hmm. back when it was uh, first released. And uh, at first, I t it took a long time to find it. Couldn't find it. And then I exited out of the game. I updated the game 
and then it changed the title screen, and then I was allowed to uh, start from the beginning instead of just tracking down the characters. Because originally I had to track down all the characters, and they would say stuff like funny little anecdotes. Mm-hmm. But then I didn't actually get the storyline and such until I re uh, you know exited out and went back in and saw oh the title screen now says Cast- Return to Castlevania. <laughs> Uh, I really wish there was more music because the remixes to the themes were amazing. I love yeah, them. you have to go so far before you happen to run into some of them. There's so they were amazing to hear, and mm-hmm. um, and even like uh, I won't spoil things, but even that final boss fight was awesome. So, oh, nice. I haven't gotten that far yet. I'm still making my way up into the castle. If I don't wander off in another direction, or but uh, I got used to it. Um, played through the original story. Then I played through at least one or two of the DLCs, then the Castlevania. And um, I will say, Rachel, if you're scared of this game being a Metroidvania Soulsborne, uh, for better or for worse, there is a, it's not called this, but there is a journalist mode that makes it so you can't die. Yeah. Okay. So, you can, so you can just enjoy the comedy and the exploring without worrying about dying. I still... I still love the little animation. Like fall off, you funny. can still explode. Yeah, get crushed, but all the chip damage that you're used to from these type of games goes away. So if okay. you're like, I just want to enjoy the comedy, you can. So it's nice. Yeah, that's good hmm. to know. Into that. I didn't know. Yeah, um, that's that's cool. That reminds me of a. There are two things that you can turn on in Sea of Stars too that makes your HP go all the way back up to full at the end of every battle. And then they have a mode that you could turn on where if you hit the button at the right time, it tells you, oh, yes, you did it um, with a little <laughs> like star that comes out of the character. Like, we <laughs> surprise nice. confetti. So I love it when I love it when um, games include those types of like modes because like it's great accessibility features for yes. people that don't want they want to still enjoy the game, but they don't want to like be frustrated so yeah and i appreciate it when they at least are nice to the player and say mm-hmm. are you doing this for the story i'm like yes yes and thank yeah you for calling I've... it that and not calling it mm-hmm. like baby mode or yeah yeah, yeah I like i don't like when they do that what was it? i think metal gear was one of them that would you know like change how you looked or mm-hmm. give you like a bonnet or something like a, yeah. a couple games I never that do that I never oh, like that, yeah, that either that because like it's it's kind of mean to people that want to like just enjoy a game for what it is. Like well, it's degrading because like Jennifer, some of these mm-hmm. games she will play and enjoy. She's using these features like heaven forbid they would have done this in like Spider-Man, Miles Morales. Oh yeah. I will give them props all day long for the absolutely amazing set of accessibility <laughs> mm-hmm. options they have. Because she's been able to play it. We're changing the face of Spider-Man to (laughs) Hom Holland. (laughs) You're just not going to let that go. (laughs) Well, she won't, so it's only fair. I don't like (laughs) it either. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) It's fine. It's weird, but I got over it because he has a mask on. It's a war machine. I get the argument. I will say... I will say that this this slightly altered model in the new one looks like somebody combined a younger version of Yuri Lowenthal and Tom Holland into one character model, which is really weird. Yeah. They they did but, show off yesterday what Mary Jane looks like, so um, Yeah. But yeah, with the accessibility stuff, like I said, Jennifer's able to use that. It, it's just when they're going into, you know, degrading people for using it, you've got people that physically may have to use those to enjoy the game. And you're basically saying, oh, okay, well, you can't play it like these other people. So we're just going to mock you for it. And I'm like, that's not as funny as you guys think. <laughs> um, and the last game I did get to play around with a little bit earlier today is I finally got to play the demo for Super Mario Wonder. Um, mm. That popped up at our local GameStop. And I was talking to George and he was like, oh, what are you up here doing? Oh, I came to go try out the, see if you guys had the the Mario Wonder demo. And he looked at me and goes, how do you know we have that when I didn't even know we had that? And it's, you know what? Never mind. It's you. <laughs> so I got to play it for a bit. I played through a couple levels. Um, I do like when you go to the character select, there's a lot of people to choose from. You got Mario, Luigi, Peach, Daisy. You know, you've got all four. Uh, it was the largest in a Mario game. 
Yeah, there's all four Yoshis, and then you also have Nabbit available. And the nice thing is, all four of the Yoshis and Nabbit are accessibility characters, like we said. <sighs> they <sighs> can't transform, so they don't turn mm. into elephants and stuff. But they also can't be killed by enemies or use power ups. They could, but they have different jumping abilities. You can still fall down a hole and die, but you know, this was how Jennifer originally was able to play New Luigi with us because she would use Nabbit and not have to worry about jumping over every single thing before she learned how to do it. And Yoshi can ride Yoshi. Yeah, <laughs> Yoshiception. Yeah, it's just can Mario get on Yoshi while Yoshi's on Yoshi. On Yoshi, I, I I'm gonna stop there before I break the, uh, my brain. I did appreciate how Yoshi winces when Elephant Mario or Elephant any of them <laughs> yeah. ride Yoshi, and he's like, "Oh, <laughs> stop it! You That's my to? spine." <laughs> yeah. Um, but I played a couple levels, and I am happy to say that the controls for it, everything is nice and tight, feels mm. perfectly good. I was able to pull off all the little trick jumps and everything I've I've grown up doing in the Mario games. Um, I already figured out some of the little secrets in some of the levels. Um, it's a pretty good bit of the game for the opening area. It acknowledges that it's a demo, so they don't make you unlock in order. So after I got through the first level, I just ran forward to another area and just tried a second level. And I'll probably try it more tomorrow if I stop by there. Yeah, people but, also found out that uh, it this is a minor mm -hmm. gripe with people. But yes, you can turn off the flowers voices. Oh. I liked them. No, I, I liked him too because it was kind of comedic, but I guess if you're playing and you keep dying at a certain part and they keep talking, you're just like, shut up, shut yeah, up. Yeah, I could see that being annoying, but I think a lot of these people complaining are just those people that are just like, oh, this is anything different. I hate it. It shouldn't be there. And I'm like, you know what? Y'all need to just get over it. <laughs> like, in the words of Yorio Othal, uh, just get over it. Um, oh, no reaction from Rachel. All right. Uh, <laughs> she's over it <laughs> she is I'm, I'm over people trying to get a reaction out of me from it I'm always going to do that though mm. well for all, all kinds of things just getting a reaction you do it to me this is true this is true <laughs> This is our, our loving back and forth relationship. <laughs> for it the started year. with Final Fantasy 15 and it can only get worse. I think it started with 7 actually. Because I remember the first day I was like, yeah, I don't like 7. You were like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and now we're enemies. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> Poor Caleb was probably like, oh no, what am I in the middle of? He just presses the like the, the little lever on the bottom of his chair and disappears underneath the desk. Yeah, it's just going to mute these two and keep on with the show. <laughs> I guarantee you all of that music is still on that audio server. Oh my god, really? Probably, yeah. Yeah, they moved it up into the second floor, so yeah, mm -hmm. that's funny. And yeah, um, Harley's back too, with the morning vibe. Oh wow. Yeah. That is some uh, college radio references there for people that have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> From Gulf Coast. So... All right, let's go ahead and jump into the news that we have for this time. <laughs> One day I'll think of something else. It's just, that's fun. Uh, hey, the dog's back. She wanted to participate in the news sequence. She kept there trying to get go. on my lap. I, we could hear her jingling as she ran around. It was kind of funny. So She's part Batman, of the show. Yep. Batman Arkham Trilogy has been delayed on Switch to no one's surprise from October to December of this year. Uh, from the game's Twitter account, they said, quote, Batman Arkham Trilogy for Nintendo Switch will now launch on December 1st, 2023. More time is needed to bring players the best possible experience on Nintendo Switch. We apologize to fans who are excited to play this version of the trilogy. Thank you for your patience. Now, so nothing's going to change. We're still only getting Arkham Asylum on the cartridge. And we still have no idea how Arkham Knight's going to play. But what what you were going to say, Rachel? So um, I, I've noticed a, a trend, mm -hmm. um, a pattern, as it were. <laughs> a pattern, um, if you will. With anything um, that is being ported to the Switch um, that is was not already a, a much older game or a Nintendo property, um, mm -hmm. it, they all of a sudden... They are like, oh yeah, no, I'm pointing to the Switch. We got this. It's gonna be easy. It, it was not, <laughs> in fact, easy, and it needs to be. They need extra time to 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 do things to get it optimized for the Switch. Um, and I am not the least bit surprised that this is a 
emerging pattern um, with all devs. It's just, it's just the way it is. I still like Arkham Asylum and Arkham City. I don't see any issue with them being on the Switch. I think mm -hmm. they're going to run fine. Um, I'm actually kind of excited. I will probably buy this physically, even though it will only have Arkham Asylum on the cartridge. That's the only game I can't play portably right now mm -hmm. because you can't play Arkham Asylum on a Steam Deck. It doesn't work. Like, it won't even start. Huh. Arkham City, I wonder why. I don't know. Uh, it's been a weird thing. No one's ever been able to fix it. Like It'll go to the launch screen and it shuts down. It's just basically listed as unplayable. That's Arkham a, City... That's a boot sequence issue. Yeah, but no one's no one's really been able to solve it. It's something how it was made or it might be a security thing. I don't know. But... Arkham City runs perfectly on there. I've been enjoying it on my Steam Deck. Runs at full frame rate, full resolution. All the stuff is there. Um, I've heard Arkham Knight pretty much runs well. I don't have it on PC, so I haven't tried it. But I know it's an option. Um, and I, let's get over. The only it's, time that they, those games truly looked bad was mm -hmm. when they remastered them because the game yeah, they didn't translate well to the next Unreal Engine at all. No, it did not. I, I got that collection and I was just like, oh. I'm guys, hoping the on. one that's on Switch is the older Unreal Engine and not the newer one. Because Ooh, then point. one, it will run better on Switch. Yeah. And two, it'll <laughs> look better. No kidding. Um, I am morbidly curious still to see how Arkham Knight runs on the Switch. I've noticed they've released no media to show it, which is, you know, always a great sign I, that I, everyone I is playing Mortal Kombat on the Switch right had, now. I would have loved that they excluded Knight for Blackgate, but Blackgate was good. I have it on the I, 3DS, I and I think I'm trying to find I the beta version. Beat, I beat all the other ones, mm -hmm. uh, but I could not bring myself to beat Knight because of the driving. I I did get through the driving. Actually, if if they didn't have Blackgate, I would have liked uh, what was it, Batman Arkham Origins, to be on there. Then, I liked that game, and then I was basically just done with the game as soon as I got to the Riddler and he's like, riddle me this, Batman. How fast can you do three laps? I was like, what? <laughs> this isn't NASCAR, you psycho. <laughs> yeah, they were a little proud of their driving to the point of making that Riddler puzzle. Like, I don't but... want to play Arkham Motorsport. What is this crap? Clearly they ran out of ideas. And uh, I, I have a small theory about Ooh. all these devs having... Uh, being overconfident with ports. <laughs> um, it worked really well with the Insane Trilogy and with Mortal Kombat 11. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing is, though, Mortal Kombat 11 was made for mobile as well. Yes. So they had already figured out how to, you know, adjust things so graphics were used less, but it still looked good. Also, Nintendo always does, you know the best they can with first party stuff. So you see things like Super Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom and you think, "Oh, Batman Arkham Asylum's going to be easy to put in there. Look at Tears of the Kingdom." And they go, "Oh, wait, we're we're not Nintendo." <laughs> and then they've realized that there's a problem. <laughs> oh shit, you there's not really a hit switch uh, export button? Oh crap. <laughs> so we will uh, we will see early in December how this all fares. Like I said, Asylum and uh, City, I think will be great. Night is what I want to see how bad this is going to be. So, you know, they're I, on an upward upward slope right now. A good upward slope, I should say, because of the uh, everything from No Man's Sky to to Ark uh, evolved, all getting these like second goes or patches that are making things run really well. Yeah, they did some really good stuff with a couple of those. I know for Ark, they pretty much just... You download an entire new game. They dumped the entire old one, redid it as it needed to be. So that's going to make the cartridge version kind of a fun throwback. Because if you put it in a system that never got the update, you have the worst possible version. And then you can get the update from somebody and play the best possible version. So Who I need to see if that works. For Mortal Kombat 1. Uh I have no hopes for that one. I, I really don't think they should have sold it at 70. It's so bad. I kind of wonder, though, like for No Man's Sky and for Ark. Like right now, we had to do this back during the after the hurricane. We didn't have Internet. 
and we had gotten a hold of a switch and we're trying to update stuff and you could get updates from other people that had them. Yeah. Could you do that for something as big as arc? Like if it's, it's yeah. technically an update, but it's such a big change. I wonder if that would still allow it to do it that way. You know, wait two days while it transfers, but who knows? Maybe. Yep. Um, this question will come up more with this lovely trend uh, that Stephen pointed out here also of more not all games on cart continuing, uh, especially with the recently announced Star Wars Heritage Pack from Aspire. So on the cart is Star Wars Force Unleashed, Star Wars Republic Commando, Episode 1 Racer, Jedi Knight, Jedi Academy, Jedi Knight 2, Jedi Outcast, but not on the cart is both of the Knights of the Old Republic games. So maybe because they're so big that they run better by doing a hard install. So what <laughs> my question is, uh, especially with now going over the or they one, ran out of space is what's what is the largest on cart game, all on cart game you can think of for the Nintendo Switch? And is it Red Dead Redemption? Um, so that I know of would probably be one of the Zelda games because I don't play Red Dead Redemption. Well, Doom, that's, Doom that's Eternal is pretty big. Itself. I'm talking yeah. about it has to have more than one game on it. Oh. And it's all on card. Oh. Uh, I know oh, I have oh, seven and eight, but that was not big. Those were all CDs. Where's my Switch? Yeah, I'm thinking um, of, uh, I'm thinking of arcade and, collections, and two. but KOTOR is a dialogue heavy game. And I that's a lot of. I don't. Uh, that's why I was I don't, like Red Dead Redemption and Undead are, I believe, are both on cart. I don't. I don't know. I uh -huh. I don't have any con any any concept of this because all of. You get me thinking now. I'm like, wait. Like, what? yeah. <laughs> when you're saying size restrictions, it's insulting that Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild fit, but then Batman doesn't fit, or. Uh, Kingdom Hearts doesn't fit. Listen, don't bring up the oh, Kingdom Hearts uh, Kingdom thing. Hearts that gives me PTSD. No oh, edition. You have ten minutes to finish this <laughs> demo, or Sora dies. Oh, that's the one. Was, that's one I, of those rare I, times where it's just like, oh, screw could just you, make Square. <laughs> Final Fantasy VII Remake Cloud Edition, and just mess with people's minds for Switch. Why oh, would you say no. that? Now Don't someone's wish gonna that. no. Listen, someone's gonna listen to this episode and go, you know what? That's a great idea. Nine minutes fifty-nine <laughs> seconds. Nine minutes fifty-eight seconds. Nine minutes fifty-seven seconds. Time oh, no. to worry about active time battle and watch some cutscenes. <laughs> that user oh, I, I on FF7 has decided to put the entire game on the cloud. <laughs> Cries, dies. Oh god. Oh. That's terrifying. Yeah, All that's right. the largest one I can think of. I'd be surprised if somebody has an answer by the next podcast of the biggest one they could find. Because I think it, it might be Red Dead Redemption and Undead Nightmare. I want to say I think I've got larger collections that might have that, but I'm going to have to go back and think about that. Because every time I, th I think of, like uh, Chris said, the arcade collections, I'm like, even Cowabunga Collection are still relatively small games. They are, but I mean... So Red Dead Redemption, that was both of those were 360 titles, but that and Undead Nightmare. Um, I know Undead Nightmare wasn't nearly as big. Like it had the voice stuff added on there, but it was using a lot of the same structure from the other ones. They save space yeah. on that. But the voice does take up a lot of space. Plus, you got tech, new textures for zombies and yeah, the that only really cool flaming horse. I never could game get. on there. That's the only rule I have for it. Oh, um, oh crap. What was the, um, uh, it's like a four player wizarding and sword game that was on Wii U that came out shrine. I have the shrine collection that has all of those on the cartridge. Yeah. But those that that's, they're very dialogue heavy, but graphic heavy. I wouldn't say so. Shrine. I would say is pretty graphic heavy, but yeah, maybe not an open world, but yeah, I'm just pretty, curious. I have to look and see what their download like... equivalent are. And they're crazy pretty like Ori comes to mind too. Like, did both of those games were those, those were big? two separate releases though? They weren't on the same cartridge. Oh, yeah, you're right. I thought they made the Ori the collection. Maybe I'm not. I think that might have been one of them being a download, maybe, but I'm not sure. Yeah. That or I think it may have shipped with two cartridges in a case. Because uh a disturbing trend <laughs> I've seen. <laughs> a disturbing trend I'm seeing is they're actually <laughs> reprinting games, but they're doing code and box reprints. Yeah, I don't like that. 
the, I mean, the we just got latest... Pikmin one and two on one cartridge, and that's both GameCube yeah, games on there. there you go. So that's the latest a good one. casualty was uh that I read about was new Super Lucky's Tale, which I enjoyed. The reprint is Code in Box. Ooh, that, that stinks. Mm. Do they ever actually mention that on the box for any oh, yeah. of these? In like, like small label, print, it says you're not getting a cartridge. Basically. Okay, that's something at least. Yeah, just at the top, it's just like Fuck you, <laughs> nice rainbow, nice little little so full, you know, pattern. Yeah, it's full game download. So when you're in walmart and, and before they had to destroy them all but when you were in walmart and you saw overwatch for switch you're like cool there's no card inside it's yeah like that spongebob meme the cartridge is in your imagination <laughs> oh my goodness or, or in or in pretty much most stores when you go to the pc gaming section all of the games are steam codes i inside. miss big box pc games those were great i do too i it came with so much cool shit Got your like Final Fantasy VII like <laughs> trapezoid. Yeah, I never got that. I have the trifold Final Fantasy VII PC release, and like all the Tomb Raiders were all trapezoids. Everything. Yeah, I remember seven. I remember Tomb Raider being a weird, weird case. So, all right. So moving on with uh, more crappy news. Naughty it's Dog the layoff is, episode. Yeah, we're having a lot of layoffs here. So Naughty Dog has announced that they're having their own run on of layoffs here around 25 contract employees are having their contracts cut short with work continuing through October before ending early. Most of the layoffs seem to be coming from the QA department, um, which I'm wondering if this is tied in where other companies are taking over their multiplayer stuff or telling them they're not doing it right for the last of us. Uh, Sources tell Kotaku that no severance is being offered for those currently laid off. And that impacted developers as well as remaining employees are being pressured to keep the news quiet. Obviously, this didn't go very well since we're reporting on this. Their contracts won't be officially terminated until the end of October, and they'll be expected to work through the rest of the month. How much work do you think you're going to get out of these people that you're telling, like, we're, right, we're cutting your contract short because we agreed to have you work for this time period, but we're just not going to pay you. Um, keep working, though. Keep working. Yeah. So one other yeah. source tells Kotaku the multiplayer game that they're working on, while not completely canceled, is basically put on ice at this point. What multiplayer game was it? It was the Last of Us multiplayer game uh, that, that was coming that, out. That they kept just showing concept art to get you excited. They're like, look at this guy on a rope. Aren't, yeah, don't did you they, want to pre-order five copies? Did they ever show any gameplay? I don't remember mm -hmm. ever seeing nope, anything had, in motion. I watched one guy do a whole timeline, and he's like, <laughs> they never showed you screenshots. It was yeah, concept art. It was great art, time. and that was it. But I wasn't super excited for the idea behind it anyways. But, yeah. yeah so. it's, it's, it's probably bad timing that, I don't know, the co-president just announced his retirement from Naughty Dog after... 19 years so i wonder if he's getting a payday <laughs> probably uh there's also been a lot of rumors going around of the last of us 2 getting a ps5 remake just like the last of us 1 did um which people were joking and i wish i could have made this joke myself but when they said they named it the last of us they didn't realize that would be the last thing they ever made because <laughs> i like final fantasy oh god <laughs> i mean at least 15... they 15 could have been the final Final Fantasy if, if it did not go well. But mm -hmm. it turned out it was 16 after all. But then uh -huh. Rachel bought so much stuff from it that Square was safe. Yeah. yeah. You're <laughs> welcome. She single-handedly saved Square. I probably did, actually. <laughs> hey, you had some passion for that game. It was always hilarious. See, every time something would come up, you would get so excited. I still love that game. That game is my child. It will always be my child. Nothing wrong with that. All right. Um, so the Telltale Games has also announced they will have layoffs, which this sucks because I Telltale has been through so much crap. They pretty much went through bankruptcy, got bought out by their own people, managed to come back, and now they're falling in again. Listen, they, wanted... they just is if they get out the wolf among us too, they've they're they've done their job. They can that's the problem. They can sleep. Uh, they wanted to make sure and announce that the Wolf Among Us 2 is still in development. Seems like a weird time to announce that while you're laying off people. Uh, but in a statement made to Jeff Keighley, yes, that Jeff Keighley, for some reason they talked to him. 
They stated, quote, due to mar- current market conditions, we regrettably had to let some of our Telltale team go recently. We did not take this action lightly, and our commitment to storytelling and finding new ways to do so remains the same. We are grateful to everyone for their dedication along this journey, and we are working to support everyone impacted. All projects currently in development are still in production, and we have no further updates at this time. Okay, so there is a trend with layoffs with well, gaming uh-huh. Naughty with, Dog too. with with um gaming companies right now. Yes, and it's the same same story essentially of like nobody. Okay, people are buying games, but they are only buying games that they des like super duper duper want. They're buying. They're saving for the ones that they know are going to be expensive. Final Fantasy VII, for example, Spider-Man, like they're saving their money for the AAA titles. That's what they're doing. They're and I think people... the problem is we're missing a type of game that we used to get a lot mm-hmm. where people could experiment, where people, you know, companies could make a game, be mm-hmm. experimental with it, but not try and make it some big triple A yeah. showcase game with all this other yeah. stuff. You Everyone is make trying it to make yeah, everyone's trying to make the next big thing, and that's the problem. Yeah, because so many games used to just be those smaller, like, I would pick it up and play it, and it was like, hey, this was not the best-looking game ever, but I had fun with it. I, You know, I loved it. So I don't think it's I don't think it's the game's problem, really, at all. Mm-hmm. Um, because likewise with uh, even where I worked, um, is... Every company who thought the, uh, I guess, who got a thought in their mind that even though the pandemic forced everybody to stay home and do a lot of things you do at home, play mm-hmm. games, buy things, because you're just, you're getting cabin fever. Yep. Mm-hmm. And everybody just said, I think with all the influx we're getting, I think we can keep that going even after when this ends. So. They went on hiring sprees or they bought up a company because there was so much cash flow. And now we're seeing all, all the problems now with uh, everyone who overhired or who just decided, hey, uh, we spent our cash cow because instead of saving it for a rainy day, um, the world slowly returned to its own version of normalcy. But that also includes everybody's just like... Uh, Everything's different. So guess what's got to be different? Saving for games you truly like or um, saving your money because, you know, student loans come back or something like that. A lot of the stuff, people don't have uh, the same cash flow they did staying home where they were. Some companies paid them to stay home or they worked from home. And because you worked from home, there was so much more you could do. But once you go into the office or once you have to not stay home anymore, uh, you'll see that there's bills to pay. So, you know, nothing's nothing's on forbearance. Nothing's shut off for a while anymore. And I think all these companies that thought we could weather the storm, we're seeing which ones could not. And it's when it's hitting even like EA and such, and and nobody's blaming their games. Um, yes, it's a cop out, but I think it's also a little bit of truth in that. Yeah, I just this whole trend of these layoffs though has just gotten out of it, hand. It, it, it's horrible and it sucks. And it's 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 worse when you you hear certain companies like Naughty Dog just saying like like I don't know what went wrong, but it's you know, we're not gonna help anybody who used to work for us. Well, I mean, I know this is probably bad timing, but I'll have to announce because of the poor sales of our free podcast. Rachel, we're going to have to let you go as our art director. Um, oh, I'm sorry, we're oh, letting bye. you off. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, bye. <laughs> bye, everybody. Bye. We're gonna have we to have to do this live. <laughs> Chris, well, I mean, fine. it has to be done uh, for the will of the people. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Chris, uh, Jeremy and I had a discussion, and we've decided to further cut costs. Uh, you cannot be on video anymore. Okay, uh, bye. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you you gave him his freedom back. Oh Not no. 
<laughs> Quick, up the Chris, up. come back. <laughs> it it's nice and comfortable here in the dark. Into the black darkness. No. Is... Fine. Fine. <laughs> oh, thank God he still has his clothes on. All right. Uh... <laughs> this isn't my only fans. That's another channel. <laughs> We plugged that at the end of the show. Chris is like, get out. <laughs> is it flexing time already? All right. <laughs> the, the tickets to the gun show are sold out. <laughs> All right. Where were we? That's the only laughs I think we're going to get from uh, layoffs for a while. <laughs> Hopefully that's the last, both serious or not, uh, layoffs we hear for a while. But I have a feeling... Because why do they keep doing this, like, going towards the holiday season? They're just like, oh, you guys have worked so hard all year. You've got your holidays and family coming up. <laughs> Screw you all. We're laying you off. Like, Probably get as much work out of them for the entire year uh, well, while they're hoping for a bonus. Yep. I or, mean, like Embra- or like Embracer, where they're like, um, if we get rid of you now, we don't have to pay for another month of uh, insurance premiums. So goodbye. And then it's like... um. Well, it's fall when all the leaves fall off the trees. So I guess <laughs> y'all are the leaves. Jobs, yeah. Y'all are Oof. the leaves falling off us. Bye. <laughs> oh, <laughs> just the way. Bye. <laughs> Bye. The way you say that is so so terrifyingly bad. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so, in other terrifyingly bad news, Sony is continuing their streak of "We're not having good times, people." Sony has finally admitted to having two data breaches in the past four months, leading to over 6,791 current and former employees having their data taken. So, yeah. So Sony is offering the employees, quote, complimentary Equifax, Equifax complete premium credit monitoring and identity restoration services. Um, forgetting to mention that Equifax had to pay a settlement of their own data breach that exposed data of 147 million consumers. Not a good trusting bit to go with that, but it seems to be Sony's repertoire after we had the big 2014 or 2011, whatever that was uh, hack. And they offered people Equifax, which then further led to this. Um, Then there was also the previously mentioned hack from ransomed VC uh, has been verified and apparently attacked a server in their entertainment technology and services business separate from the game, movie, and music divisions. So no word on what all is going to be coming out from that, but even if that ended up being a big goose egg, nothing going on, they still managed to lose all their, like a bunch of their employees' information. Well, Sony, that's two more exclusives you have over Xbox now. God damn. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. That was a good one, Steve. <laughs> wow. I, I just, I, I hate it. Oh my I just god. Hate it that, I just hate it that they're taking the MGM grand approach to it, saying, we'll fix it. I was like, no, you're not. You're just thinking that your team's good enough to fix it. And this is the th- third or more data breach you've had. First it was us. Now yeah. it's you. Yeah, the worst part of your joke, though, is the fact that since it was their own employees that did this and it was exclusive to Sony, they kind of did pay for this exclusivity. Mm-hmm. Then. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> FTC won't help you now. <laughs> They're exclusively vulnerable. Hey. Oh, man. I just, I don't know what is up with Sony recently. Like, they really need to get out of their own shit. Like, the... PS5 looks weird as hell, but it's a fun game console. Mm-hmm. Um, did you just look over at yours? Yep, I did. It's right <laughs> next to me. My uh, precious. The tower. It looks, it looks like a spaceship. It's still so weird looking. It looks like a spaceship. Both of the systems this generation are weird it's, looking. It's, let's a be post, here. it's a post-contemporary size skyscraper, actually. It's a post-Sony sanity. Post-contemporary <laughs> skyscraper. Looks like one of those really, really modern buildings. Like, I don't it's know. It's a Wi Fi router or a Dyson fan. It's one of those two. It's a really modern <laughs> building. Speaking of insanity, just wait until we, <laughs> what the next subject is. Oh, yeah. So, 
Rachel, we're going to let you talk about this one because oh. I know you are going to just have fun with this. I'm just <laughs> laughing because it, <laughs> like I didn't even I didn't even know that this like I knew I knew there was mm-hmm. like an a debate between how Ifrit and Ifrit is pronounced, which if you use the, I always said Ifrit. I always said Ifrit until Final Fantasy 16 came out and then they I- say Ifrit. Ifrit and then I questioned myself, but I was like, I nah. Ifrit. What? Yeah, I was just like, I wow, I've been I saying it wrong, Ifrit. but it's still Ifrit. Yeah, I that's said, literally, yeah. yeah. I said it different to both of them. <laughs> oh, what did you say? I, I said Ifrit. Hmm. Ifrit? Yeah. Hmm. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> well, there's also Chocobo and Chocobo. So. Speaking of Kel- <laughs> Ray, Chocobo, <laughs> we'll remember that. <laughs> Steven! Wait, what did you say? Chocobo. What? He put emphasis on the wrong syllable. Ooh. <laughs> when you first saw that name, you didn't know what to say. I, I said like, Chocobo. I said Chocobo. Chocobo. So I was like, Chocobo. Chocobo. In Final Fantasy VI, they even go in the, the name. They say Chocobo in the yeah. Electro de Chocobo thing. That's how yeah. you say it. Chocobo. And then who's the big guy from Double Dragon? Is it Adobo or Adobo? A Bobo. Yeah. A Bobo. A Bobo. A Bobo. <laughs> I called him Adobo for a while. <laughs> that I can see. And then, and then, of course, there's the Titus versus Titus debates, which even internally, there's multiple ways that it's pronounced. I always said Titus. Uh, Kingdom Hearts solve it when they're like, you know, get back here, Titus, or something, and you're like, no. Finally. And then, then fast forward to Kingdom Hearts two when they say the name again in like a flashback sequence or something, and they said Titus, and I was like. Yeah. Ah! You don't get the actual pronunciation until you play some obscure Japanese mobile game that has it. Yeah, I just it sounds like a fabric uh, softener <laughs> mascot. <laughs> See, I always said Titus until mm-hmm. my um, my good friend Cassie literally like basically dumped a cold bucket of water on me and told me why it's Titus. <laughs> And I was like, okay, I'll pronounce it Titus now. I'm sorry. But what we're getting at is that um, (laughs) there there is apparently a um, Kate Sith versus Ket She argument. I've never heard it that way. I've never heard it that way. Like I've heard that saying um, because it's Gaelic. Um, but I I've never Kat Sith for the longest time. No, I said I always said Kate Sith always. Uh, but the official Anglicanized mm. pronu- pronunciation of it is Kate Sith. It's official in a tweet from Square Enix themselves, um, <laughs> and it's just I just and there's also some some weirdness with even this, even the Anglicanized like pronunciation because like. It was danced around in Advent Children. Like they went out of their way to not say Kate Sith's name in Advent <laughs> Children. And then in Dirge of Cerberus, they only said Kate of Kate Sith. And believe it or not, it's like a blink and you miss it type moment. Um, mm-hmm. And it's Sid saying it. And his accent's weird because he always has something in his mouth. So it's just, it's a, it's a, I, I'm just, amused that they even had to do a, a tweet about this like they're all going all right y'all better shut up this is how it's pronounced go away that's literally basically probably what they were doing and i just i just <laughs> y'all just need to get over it <laughs> basically they were yuri low and when you need them we're gonna so, make it a verb eventually. It, it already is. So <laughs> they Lowenthal'd um, your asses. Yeah, they Lowenthal'd us. But he should have. He should voice Kate Seth. Oh God! <laughs> but it's just, uh, I'm gonna laugh about this anytime a pronunciation announcement comes out for a video game. I'm mm-hmm. gonna be like, okay, well, are they Kate Sithing us? Are they afreeding us? Are they tedising us? us? But I don't. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. What a Chocobo situation. Oh, I mean, is, Jesus. Is this as bad at like where you would read a book, hear a character name, you would kind of determine how it's pronounced in your head, and then they make a live action one later and you're going, huh? Like, where well, did you get that from? So, like, I have, like, 
I have experienced that. I'm yawning. I have experienced that. <laughs> um, tell. Like, as I'm reading a book, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's pronounced this way. Like, um, for example, um, the name Cedric. I've heard people pronounce it Cedric. And I was like, why would you do that? <laughs> but then but then people will be like, well, Rachel, it's also a regional difference. Both pronunciations are correct. Like how people in the UK spell color with an extra U. And then we spell right, it without. With like, like there's there's regional pronunciations to certain things too. So I'm of the mind that I'm like, pronounce it however the hell you want. Like, I really don't care and nobody else should. Unless it's like incredibly demeaning or the meaning itself of whatever you're saying changes based on how you're pronouncing it. Who cares? Yeah. So. So I would like to go along with the theme here and say oh, there's, no. there's two instances where sometimes the pronunciation is like nails across the chalkboard. Okay. And one of them is controversial because it's Reese's Pieces, not Reese's Pieces. So stop saying Reese's. Reese's. Pieces. So that's that's number one. Oh, Reese's Pieces. Okay, number one. first off, who is saying well, Reese's Pieces? Who? Okay, <laughs> Reese's go on, go Pieces. On. No, but I've never the, heard the that. The other one that bothers me is I'm listening to the audiobook called Disrupting the Game from the Bronx to the Top of Nintendo. And Reggie fils uh he is reading the whole audiobook himself. His, his biography. Oh, wow. Okay. He's narrating it. So you, what, a, you're what a guy. Listening, you're listening to him, and I'm like, okay, fine. But what bothers me is I'm used to the word candidate and finance. <laughs> candidate. And he says candidate. <laughs> and, and he says, and I, and I shit you not, he says finance instead of finance. Okay, finance, I he, find that finance. one weird. And every time he says the finances finance? of Nintendo, and I'm like, what did you just say? Everybody has one, though. I'm willing to bet that everyone has one. There is a word that you have read or seen more than you have heard. And the only time you ever get called out is when someone admits it to you. And I bet. No one is willing to tell, and I'm gonna say I'm gonna say how I thought this was pronounced. Uh, pronounced <laughs> Reggie Philzaim. No one's gonna tell him how to say finance. <laughs> Emphasis on the wrong syllable. Exactly. <laughs> also, who in the heck says Reese's Reese's pieces instead of Reese's pieces? <laughs> I hate Reese's listen, two pieces. Listen, I've I I have put emphasis on the wrong syllable a number of times in my life you love that um, phrase i do <laughs> like uh, i i have i have a number of times in my life because i i if if y'all knew the number of books that were on my tbr and you can also like look at the bookshelves behind me y'all know how much i read i just read it i'm not reading it aloud i'm just literally reading it with my mm -hmm. eyeballs sometimes i i'm not gonna know how to pronounce a word but I will also like try to pronounce a word. I'll be like, I've never seen that word before in my life. And then I will pronounce it. I'll be like, that sounds weird. And then I will go on like Google and look up a pronunciation guide. And there's almost always, it goes to the same exact YouTube channel on how to pronounce this word. And I'm like, okay, I was very wrong or, Oh, I was right. Um, yeah, but, fantasy novels and sci-fi, I think are the worst for just well, making I, up I, words. No, I get it now. If something is, slightly mispronounced from what you're used to mm -hmm. and they're taking that as but it's it's the okay word it's one thing when it's something embedded in culture and that yeah. language and it's also when, when it's yeah when it's pronounced when it's lancaster uh <laughs> when it's uh oregon <laughs> norfolk you know, I've, my, so oh. many people argue with me over how to say norfolk and i'm like dude i'm from there like it's norfolk. I, norfolk i also norfolk, think norfolk. i think oh, norfolk, norfolk. You know, Norfolk. I think it's also common, <laughs> really common to, to have mispronunciations of words or or just different ways of pronouncing things in the South because <laughs> we're in the South. Not that we're uneducated. It's just that most here have a very strong Southern accent and sometimes our words are weird. Yeah, um, dialects are a thing. Dialects are a thing. Exactly. Um, but Words are hard. 
I also <laughs> like I'm I'm one of those types of people that I know a lot of words. There was a time where I was like, I'm looking at a word and I'm like, I know this word from somewhere. Where do I know it from? And I would pick up my libretto of Phantom of the Opera and it would be in that libretto. No <laughs> lie. Um, but I was like, but the pronunciation of the word in like the musical, like in the soundtrack right, or in the video of the of the recording that I would hear is different because, of course, it's British. They, yeah, they're and, it's and, the London cast, and then I and, would read it. And I'd, oh, it's pronounced this way. No, it's not. Yeah. It's pronounced. This is the American version of whatever. And I'm sitting here yeah. going, oh. I have like a whole slew of words that I will admittedly uh, annoy my wife with because of the English <laughs> pronunciation. Mm -hmm. They have, you know, basil, oregano, uh, aluminium, uh, laboratory. <laughs> And aluminium I, I, is actually right. We're saying it wrong. We're spelling it wrong. It's aluminum foil forever. I will. I will never. I. I will never say herbs with a hard H. I will never do it. This is herbs. I will never do it. It's There's herbs. herbs. Yeah. Um, and then also like um, I. I do find myself rapidly switching between the the two pronunciations of garage, garage and garage. I just say garage. Oh, I didn't know about I, that well, one. Oh yeah, There's garage. It's garage like, over there across the pond. So I've always seen that as like vase and vase. Is vase is expensive and vase is cheap? And then so aunt, then aunt and aunt and, and garage. Oh, is, that's is, a fight in my house. Oh, aunt I and aunt. aunt. Yeah, because my aunt is not an insect, <laughs> and Amanda's like it's aunt. No, it's not. My it's okay. My wife says caramel when I'm like, "There's you're missing letters." It's caramel. <laughs> oh yeah, like I have never said caramel. I've said caramel. Like I say caramel. I it's it's just it's so one of funny. my favorite sweets. Is car is caramel. Regional regional pronunciations are so much fun. Um, we yeah. had a whole we had a whole like discussion like in my college English class about it. I'll have it to was... send. I'll have to find the YouTube channel. Is a guy does shorts. He's British. Mm -hmm. He moved to America, and he actually and goes into audio? huh. Did Chris just lose audio? No, there was a pop in my mic for some reason. You all, oh, okay. you all went sure crazy for a bit. Oh, that was yeah. on my end. Uh -huh. that happens. But the guy um, purposely goes into the history of words going from the U.S. or English versions of it, where there are times where everyone's like, oh, well, this is the correct one. But actually, it started like this in the U.S. first in the colonies before it got brought over and changed for this. Like, he goes through the whole explanation of it, and it's... It's well, kind of I mean, funny to technically, see. if you believe uh, the lore, mm. um, our way of speaking here in the States is actually closer to the way of the British, the way the folks over there actually spoke, if you believe that theory, um, based on Shakespearean pentameter and all of that. So, yeah, I just still find it hilarious. <laughs> uh, I have a friend who is like a linguistics, like, expert mm -hmm. like that's oh. what they're like master's thesis <laughs> is in bless you <laughs> boom you tried oh, was <laughs> yeah that was hilarious <laughs> but it's always fascinating me like us talking about pronunciations and stuff like that i was like Ooh, i wonder what nathan would think so that's great. But, <laughs> I'll have to see what other words I uh, I say weird to people. All right. So our last bit of news for today before we have the big question for this week. Sony has announced Sony Pictures Core coming for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. This was previously called Bravia Core um, or Bravia if you want to be weird. Um, PlayStation Plus Premium and Deluxe members get access to a curated catalog of up to 100 ad-free movies. Some titles listed include Resident Evil Damnation, Kingsglaive Final Fantasy XV, Yay! or Kingsglaive, I don't know, uh, Looper, Elysium, uh, and early access to Gran Turismo based on a true story, which I didn't realize that's actually the title, the based on a true story part. Which this is very the much video game, you guys. Uh, right. It's and the they change so much about it. Yeah. Uh, for digital purchase in UK, France, Germany, and J Japanese markets. Mm. They also announced that digital purchases of the Gran Turismo movie will give you credit to use in the Gran Turismo 7 game when you make real money purchases, which remember that game is 
full of them and will constantly ask you to buy more credits and buy things. Uh, that's one thing I never liked about that one. So I find it funny they're doing this. You don't have to actually have active PlayStation Plus to use this to rent and purchase things. But you do have to have the higher tiers to get free movies uh, from it to be able to access and watch. Because uh, people were worried if they... Oh, go ahead. Why are the movies just basically what I can find on Crackle? It's how it is. They probably... I mean, one of the things people give PlayStation Plus a lot of crap about is you can't... Even on the higher end ones, you don't get new games day one. So they're they're wondering if they're going to do the same thing where you can't get new movies when they come out. You're only going to get older movies. I'm, I'm being serious. Mm -hmm. You can only get older movies because they want you to buy them digitally or other ways. Mm -hmm. um, they did have to come out and say that if you you have this and you buy a movie and then you lapse your PlayStation Plus account, you don't lose your movies. People were worried about that because if you mm. do that with games, you lose your games. Um, so at least you get to keep your movies because that would have been really really stupid that would have been really stupid yeah yeah because at that point you're not buying crap you're just renting it so any thoughts on this anyone going to be watching movies through the sony pictures core on your playstation um, 4 playstation no, I check that out. yeah due to the 40 dollar hike up um i will look through it through the remainder of my playstation premium highest whatever it is thinking it was worth it and then I'm going to go down to the lowest tier because um, a lot of these, they're on so many other services mm -hmm. that I think the only thing they, they kind of had going for it uh, was you could pay like a dollar fifty to two dollars to get like the like the 4Ks or the 3D audios or something of some of them, which I was looking into or the Atmos. Um, well, the audio. microtransaction, the extra the features yeah, no, for the audio. Oh, my God. Transactions to the movies. Yes. <laughs> oh. that is the sony way um so i was like all right at least you're giving me something i can tinker with before i say like adios to or i see like my library shrink and my hard drive space get plentiful because i get rid of all <laughs> these games i can't buy, i didn't play so i need to go back and delete those off my ps5 also since i gave up my playstation plus i'm like i have all these games i can't even play anymore Just wipe them out so rachel you said you might uh take a look at it yeah, I'll take a look at it, see what's available. Okay, you can come back and tell us what's there. Yeah. Uh, Chris, any you interest can, like, invite you? a friend into your group and then do share screen and then play the movie on your PSPRP. I'll I be guarantee that now. <laughs> <laughs> that answered my question. I want nothing to do with it. Remember, though, if you do have this new PlayStation uh portable thing that they have for streaming you still have to have a ps5 to stream these movies to possibly stream them to it you can't just stream the movies to this device mm. that thing will never ever make sense to me no matter how much someone tries to argue how great an idea this is and i had a person try and argue how this was better in every way than a switch was well you know there, there are going to be fanboys for better or for worse People that is more to... than a fanboy. That is like, if you're that passionate, I don't care if it's on the Xbox side, Nintendo, or this, there's something wrong with you. You have lost any sense of logic. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that whole, if you insult the thing I've dedicated my life to, you are insulting me mindset, which is amazingly prevalent these days. Oh, yeah. It's an well, internet no thing, kidding. I guess. Yeah. No, you what? grow up and just latch on to a company or a brand or a franchise. And then no, as soon I've... as you get objective, they think, oh, this person hates me. I, I, I cheered for the Wii U controller until I went into the next room over and it turned off. And I was like, all right. Never mind. See, we have a long living room, so it worked in there. I could walk all the way into the mm -hmm. kitchen area and sit down and play it. And mm -hmm. walk, it would make it to our bedroom. Like I was I right in the right into the office. So it was just like living room, office, no more signal. Like, Did I happen to rearrange the living room to optimize the distances? Yeah. <laughs> I did that at least once. <laughs> but it worked. So. All right, so we're going to finish up and go into our big question, which this week, uh, Stephen, I think you said you wrote this one up. Yep. 
So what is your favorite controllers and why? Uh, Chris, we're going to start off with you on this one. Okay. Well, uh, I have two. Mm -hmm. Um, One that I haven't tried in a long time, but I've been trying to get back. And one that is my current favorite. Uh, My current favorite is the PS4 DualShock. Um, Okay. For some reason, it works on my PC. It works on, you know, because I use controllers almost exclusively. I'm Rachel reaching for one. (laughs) I have two right next to me that I will use as a visual aid. (laughs) Go ahead, Chris. But uh, I play games almost exclusively with Mm D-pads. And uh, usually I play fighting games. So I need something that is responsive and quick. And I find that the PS4 DualShock is better than the PS5 controller in that regard. Okay. Um, I don't know why, but I've hooked my PS5 controller up to Steam, and it keeps disconnecting on me. PS4 does not. The hmm. controller that I've been trying to get is uh, the RetroBit Saturn controller. Ooh. With just the D-pad, and then you have the three, uh, three top buttons and three bottom buttons. That's how I played Capcom fighting games back in the day. And I think I got, if I get that back, I'd probably back to my usual level. There you go. All right. Yeah. Steven, what about you? What are your favorite controllers so, and why? I've got three um, altogether. One's going to be for its feel. The other one's going to be for overall mm-hmm. uh, functionality. And then the other one is just a special place in my heart. So for the special place in my heart, it's obviously going to be the NES controller because even through growing up, uh, it's still not too small in my hands and I still have not felt a better D-pad. There's something about the NES D-pads that have never failed me. Mm -hmm. And anyone who has a broken one, I really wonder what you did. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) In terms of feel, this is going to be weird to some people, but Anything from Xbox 360 into the current Xbox, you that's not weird for me. I completely agree. Put the keypad on it without the keypad. I can't stand these controllers. What you put the keypad on it, and it's the perfect weight. There's a place to rest my hands right on the keyboard, like on the sides of the keyboard. It's just wonderful, and I can use this for hours. That's just for the feel. But for still for functionality, I hate to be that kind of fanboy, but because they ripped out the 3DS battery and they put it in a Switch controller, honestly, they did. Um, yeah. <laughs> this is the longest battery life I've ever seen on a controller. To have 80-hour battery life because you're using what used to be in a, a high-end portable that did 3D is astounding. Um, I actually have never had drift on these i know some people have again what are you playing i'd love to know because i i don't want to play those games but (laughs) um this one gets the weight almost to the xbox but because of that it's kind of like mario in most of the games it's the all-around favorite (laughs) Um, all right it just has everything where i need it to be nice so rachel Okay. What are your favorite controllers and why? I have several vivid visual aids because I have reasons for why I like things. <laughs> I so, the other <laughs> so here's my problem. I have pretty big hands for a lady. I have very long fingers. I have piano fingers. You don't and have beca- dainty hands? And because of that, like, and I also have hyperextended thumbs from years of playing piano. Um, and so certain controllers feel weird in my hands. So a number of years ago, I would have said the PS3 controller is my favorite, but because my fingers are so long, (laughs) it does not sit very well in my hands anymore. It doesn't feel as comfortable. Um, I love the PS4 controller because of the ergonomic shape of the PS4 controller. It sits very nicely in my hands. Same thing, believe it or not, with the PS5 controller. I like it even more because it weighs a little more. I have not had the same problem with the Steam disconnecting thing, um, but I also, like, always leave it plugged in. Like, I'm not trying to do a Bluetooth connection to it, so I'm not sure what... That could be something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And I like the switch pro controller for the same reason it's got a good weight it's 
ergonomic, like it's got a nice shape. I can just kind of let, let it rest in my hands and whatever. But still, my favorite controller of all time, for that same reason, because of the way the shape is, is the wireless GameCube controller. Yeah. Wavebird. 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 I have two of these babies, and it's just they're they're just it it just sits nicely. It's so good. Um, I also like the normal GameCube controllers, but I don't know. There's something about the curve that just makes it good. Anytime I went over to any of my friends' houses, like growing up and they had an Xbox or an Xbox 360 or whatever. And I'm just like, I'll play, but I'm not going to be happy about it. And they're like, why? Oh, so and I'm like, and I'm like, they're, it, and I'm like, they're, and I'm like, they're, you're, the controllers are weird. And they go, what do you mean the controllers are weird? I'm like, it's not shaped to fit comfortably in your hand, especially when you have long fingies. That's how I felt about the Dreamcast controller. So, it's, well, I think it was great and add, weird like, at the same ASMR time. ASMR yeah. white noise favorite is the NES clacking. Hearing those buttons in the D-pad, mm -hmm. you can lull me to sleep with those. But it's just, <laughs> for me to play a game, the controller has to be comfortable. Um, like, for me to play it for a long time. Because, man, my hands will get tired. Or my wrists will get tired from holding whatever I'm holding. Um, and it's just, if my fingers touch each other while I'm playing a game, I'm like, Ooh, that's why I was so excited when the, um, the 3DS XL came out. I was like, Oh, Oh, this is wonderful. I can, wide enough now. And I'm like, I can play more comfortably now with my long fingers. Um, that's why I like those, um, that Ambernic kind of like little tiny console thing that you could load a bunch of stuff onto mm -hmm. as great as it is. I'm glad I got the one that was like slightly longer because like the smaller ones, I was like, Oh man, I, I, I don't <laughs> like this. It's not long enough. My fingers touch, not comfortable. So didn't realize this was a fear of yours. <laughs> it's it's not a fear. It's just, it's, it's very yeah. like, I, I don't know. Like when you're gaming, you know, I don't want my, I don't want to have to hold my thing like this. That's just, mm -hmm. that's not comfortable. Like this, it's good. Yeah, I don't, I don't get people who, who use the N64 controller and grabbed it from the middle. I was like, what are you doing? Yeah. What do you mean I grab don't... it from the middle? I always grab it from the middle. I grab it from the sides and played from the outside. Yeah. In. No, I yeah. always play like that. People the... who grab the middle, I'm like, what are you doing? Riding a you're bike? You're using the Z trigger? trigger. I mean, you're. So I only. <laughs> I only like did the like the weird turn <laughs> thing for very <laughs> for very for very specific games, like. But I don't I don't like the N sixty four controller. <laughs> it was weird. It was weird. So, I but... like. I guess I'll go and go into mine. I like the N sixty four controller. It would not make this list, but I will defend it. Um, so controller wise, I really do like the 360, the Xbox One, the Series X controllers. But my favorite, I think, out of all of those, and actually I did have props down here because I have just controllers hidden everywhere in my house, it seems. The Elite 2 controller. The weight of it, the feel of it, being able to adjust everything. I love the D-pad on it. Everything just works well for me on this. Um, plus, I like the ability of using the back paddles, which I do use a lot. I never yeah, remember I, to program those. I I I tried those uh, when I used to work for a game store, and those got traded in. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I just pulled off all the wings, and I was like, oh, it's still so much better without these things in the back. Well, I mean, I if it's a game that I'm not going to use them, I, I pop them off. Or sometimes I'll have games where I only use two of them or particular ones. But like, I remember when I would play Overwatch, I did not like playing Overwatch unless I used this because, you know, I was usually playing. I think Osiris flying around in the air. Mm -hmm. and or pharaoh and using her i would be able to actually control her flight with the back buttons while still being able to maintain aiming and doing stuff and it made me way more effective at doing it and i just loved how it worked so i usually stick with this for a lot of stuff but in general i think my favorite controller that has ever existed that till the day i die if i had to pick one this is what i would choose to play most of my games super nintendo Nice. This is the controller. I If I had to only use this for the rest of my life, I'd be like, I'm good. I'll figure it out. 
yeah, I don't have an analog stick, but like I need to remember to bring this with me because I have this is the actual Nintendo one for the Switch, and then I have another one that I use with my analog for connecting to stuff. Um, I use it for everything from Nintendo to Game Boy Advance to everything else. I need to play Dead Cell with this because I'm sure that'd be really good. So you people mean to tell me that you never took this and played it like that? I've no, always played that, it like that. Nope. Hold it in the middle. Is this what? Because there's a trigger <laughs> in the back, dude. It's you're basically holding the nunchuck from a Wii. It's all it is. Okay, so yeah, I don't do that. Okay, I so have my hand actually on it, Steven. Steve, no, keep it in your hands, but turn the controller sideways. No, 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 no. Like the <laughs> no, <Like that>? no. <laughs> Here we go, the visual yeah, section. We, like this. <laughs> Alright, we're using an XYZ format here. <laughs> so I would hold it like weird. Uh, yeah, to play certain games because You're of the... You're remying this thing. Yes, because <laughs> I would hold it weird to to use the center part for certain mini games on like Mario Party. So I would hold it weird. Okay. okay. Yeah. So our friend Remy that you know, mm -hmm. when he plays on a Super Nintendo controller, plays it like this, upside down. That's the only is, way he plays it. What is wrong with that man? I don't know. I looked at him the first time he did that at my house, and I was like, are you mocking me? Like, are you trying to fight I'm, me? And I'm, just... I'm so good, I can play it upside down. Yeah, I'm just like, what the hell, man? Uh, so, I, have I, you heard of the... Uh, still can't get an explanation of that. Have you seen... Have you seen... The, the, this is a <sighs> bit dull, but... Uh -huh. Have you seen the Tetris uh, Champions that play by doing this because no they, but i'm if you watch if you watch some of the best tetris players out there of the nes ones mm -hmm. they they basically what they had to do is they they um either rubber band or they tape two nes controllers next to each other and it helps them rotate drop and do things faster because of how they're hitting the d-pads and i'm like they're, you're not even looking at the controller. You're just sitting there, like starting a fire. It was just <laughs> smack and pray. I'm, 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 I'm horrified. It reminds me of the uh, <laughs> Smash Brothers melee tournaments when they got so insane that people preferred broken controllers because they played better for Smash than good controllers. What? what? Yeah, for particular what? tricks. And then I don't. I really don't understand the ones that now play. Where it's nothing but buttons. The entire controller is just yeah, buttons. Hit, hit directions boxes, and everything. And I'm like... Boxes boggle my mind. And I'm like, you are on another level of awesomeness. Because I could never, ever. Yeah, I hope you're still having fun. Because I don't think I would anymore. I don't know how I can do a dragon punch with just pressing a button six times. I'm like... Oh. I know at least three people who play Street Fighter with keyboards. And I can't do it. <laughs> we know special people. Uh, what is wrong with them? Oh, man. All right. So we've all had our fun arguments over how we pronounce words and how we use controllers and how Steven's wrong about the N64 controller. I will argue that to the day I die. Hold it in the middle like an actual human being. No. Bastard. I don't even hold it in the middle. There is only two games. I will hold it like Steven's holding it. And that is Mortal Kombat 4, because you play it with the D-pad and hold it like that. And... um Oh crap! What was the other side scroller that did that one? Um, mischief, uh, mischief makers. Everything else, you use the analog stick and the Z trigger, and then you'd hold the right side, and that's how you would hold the controller. Madness. Their own artwork to, showed that. Their demos were like what that. What if you have to press the L button? You're done. You don't. You uh, almost every one of those games don't even use it because it would be Z trigger. That was kind of the weird placement of that, but it's yeah, that's just how that would how that was. I don't know <laughs> if you guys just heard Suki yawn, but it was very cute. Oh, do we count that? Do we count that against her? Or do we make a second list for the dog. <laughs> <laughs> do you think Suk? Tell us on that on Twitter. Just let us know. <laughs> she also has one of her paws on my face, which you can't see right now. No, I can kind of see it. That's adorable. <laughs> All right, so. Now that we have to vote about yawning dogs, we'll go ahead and let everybody know where we can find you on the internet as we round up this lovely episode. Steven, we will start with you. Where can we find you online? Uh, you can find me holding both sides of X and set of the middle <laughs> uh, at loading underscore time. Um, you can also find me in the ever filling up blue sky at N1Nintendo. 
That's one instead of an I. Dot b, b sky dot social dot com. You can find me at the people who hold the controller in the middle called Hive. Oh, you bastard. Montendo. <laughs> <laughs> and you can argue about all of that uh, on Discord, of course, if you uh, meet us there at n one Nintendo dot. And again, the I is a one. There will be a fight. This will move over to Discord. Pictures will be thrown out. There's going to be a poll. Discord. Oh, yeah. There will be some Discord. Speaking of which, Chris, where can we find you on the internet? You can't. <laughs> the shadow knows. With my luck, watch this be like the video cuts out for him and I can't edit it properly. <laughs> We're back to his image again. <laughs> But yes, All right, that's Rachel, it. where can we find you online? You can find me on Twitter, threads, and Instagram um, um, under at Outrageous. That's O-U-T underscore R-A-C-H-E-O-U-S. You can also find me in the blue, blue sky soaring above as I post absolutely nothing um, uh, under also Outrageous, but with no underscore. And then it's dot B-S- ky dot social um and then on twitch uh, also under outrageous no underscore uh yeah that's where you can find me um i thought i was gonna stream this week i don't i don't know i'm, I'm too tired I, my my schedule filled up with visiting friends well what's the ac update the, oh she told us that last week yeah but there's it's, no fan now so now we're at 100 percent. yeah we're at 100 <laughs> percent. it's doing it's doing the things it needs to do so yeah. yeah. Just my, in time for fall. Yep. <laughs> my other friend, Joey, not the one we know, a different one. He uh, was catching up on the episodes and he was like, yeah, just she got her AC fixed. Yet? <laughs> 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 yeah. We talked about the last one. She got it fixed. Finally. Watch this episode for an update. <laughs> yeah. He should be caught up by now. He was kind of laughing about that. Like, man, is she ever going to get her AC fixed? <laughs> <laughs> Well, tell so Joey I have heard I said about hi, that. hi. Oh, 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 he'll listen to this. Hi, Joey. <laughs> yeah. This, this is old GameStop Joey. Oh, <laughs> <Aww>, Joey. <laughs> All right. Well, I've been your host, Jeremy Powers. You can find me over uh, my link tree, which is just listed as Zenspath. You can find me at blue sky at zenspath.com. Instagram and threads is at zenspathcom. Twitter, Hive, and Discord is at zenspath. Twitch is twitch.tv slash Zenspath. And finally, if you're listening to the audio version of this and you'd like to watch the video version of it, you can find that at youtube.com slash Zenspath com. If you want to see and our faces. Yes. And the visual section of the podcast. As we argued over the controller, controller, controller correctly. <laughs> yeah, no. it's You hold it in the middle and you hold it on the right. That is <laughs> it. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> I'm a fundamental Nintendo 64 I don't know. Uh, <laughs> and if you're watching this and wish to listen to it because you don't want to see the sickening way that he holds that controller, uh, that goes for either of us, I guess. Uh, <laughs> you can find oh us at God. Apple Podcasts. Uh, anywhere you find your podcast, you can download the show from there. Or you can find us at zenspath.libsyn, L-I-B-S-Y-N dot com slash site. I think dot com still works, but they're updating it to site. So, yeah. All right. This has been episode 104 of the Zenspath Entertainment Network, and we're out. It's pronounced Jif. <laughs> oh, you son of a bird. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> the gun show. Hold it in the middle, not by the side.